Welcome back to another episode over here on the bus build. Today we were doing a lot of prep work to get the bus ready for spray foam, which at this point is completely done and we have it back in the driveway. In order to get the bus ready for spray foam, we needed to get the wheel wells boxed out and the diesel tank inlet boxed out. We also had to get a few wires still put in and then tape off all of the different things that we didn't want spray foamed, such as the windows, electrical wires, and different fixtures. But of course, with anything, a good day always starts with a list. So we got quite a bit of a list today, and uh, pretty much we're gonna go down this list. Rachel's gonna help me because uh, she wants to learn as much as she can because she's gonna build her own bus one day. Yes. So let's get wiring. You excited? I'm excited. I'm ready. Do you know what you're excited about? Learning something new. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. So she's, here we go. This is gonna be too much fun. <laughs> So I always appreciate having my sister around to come help out on the bus build, but the first thing that we're gonna be working on is putting the final electrical in, specifically the solar wire. Now in a previous video, you may have noticed that when we were doing our side strapping inside of the school bus, we were doing two pieces of three quarter plywood put together. So at this point, what we're gonna be doing to run the solar wire down to the actual location where we will finally have our batteries, we have to cut out the back side of that second sheet of plywood so that we can leave room for the wire to pass on through. In order to make these cuts, we are using an oscillating saw so that we can make just enough spacing for the wires to pass through. And by the end of it, Rachel was getting pretty good with that saw. Oh, oh, oh no. All the wires are falling. Be like, some, oh. something like this, you know, once we put it all back together. Perfection right here. <laughs> <laughs> can't I'm, even tell. I'm not upset about it. You can't even tell. <laughs> you can't even tell. <laughs> I like it. The first few things that we already have started on the list was that in a previous video, we started installing our propane line and the solar line, which is right here. And Rachel is actually helping me really quickly and we're just gonna be safetying all these off. Uh, one thing that I will say really quickly is uh, Rachel's currently gonna be installing these little metal plates. You might see these in residential houses a lot of times, but what these are gonna be used for is to cover the places in which the lines, uh, electrical, propane, anything is passing through somewhere that in the future we might be putting a screw because this plate's gonna protect us from putting the screw right into that propane line possibly in the future. So uh, safety first and uh, Rachel's doing awesome. One thing to remember when you're spray foaming is that once it is spray foamed, it is quite permanent and it is going to be really difficult to go back and make any types of changes later on. So in that way, it is very important to be putting these metal plates in now so that you can identify where the wires or propane lines are passing through the wall and that you're gonna need a safety plate to be installed. All of the different propane lines and wires we are tying down with different wire clamps and zip ties to make sure that they are held in place before the spray foam actually goes in. You can notice in this clip again that we are cutting out the back piece of plywood so that the wire can fit behind that section. The metal plate would then go on top of that piece and then at that point you are ready to final install the last piece of plywood and finish off the actual casing. What did you just say? I feel powerful now that I know how to take these in and out. <laughs> it's a trick. It's magic. It's not magic. It's magic. <laughs> Look at this. It does it up and boom. Just out. Oh, these things. All right. Rach. What's, What's next? I don't know. I'm going to look at the list. You want to start... Ooh. Do you want to run the 12 gauge wire to the kitchen? Sure. We're going to run the 12 gauge wire to the kitchen. Here we go. <laughs> what? I don't know what 12 gauge wire to the kitchen means. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> so essentially what we have to do is right there, Rach, is where our solar system is going to go. Okay. So what we're going to do is there's going to be a, a 12 volt panel right there, but we're going to run a 10 gauge actually all the way around to right there which is gonna be in the back of the kitchen. Okay. Because it's in the back of the kitchen and it's a 10 gauge wire, we're gonna put a second distribution panel right there hmm. for the kitchen. So there's actually gonna be two 12 volt distribution panels in here. Good to know. Hmm. Still don't know what most of that means, but it's okay. <laughs> we're here to learn. <laughs> so all the different wires and solar components are going to be in the back left side of the school bus or passenger side. And since I don't wanna to have to run a bunch of wires over to the driver's side, what we ended up doing was running a 10 gauge wire over into the kitchen cabinet. And at that point, we can use it as a second distribution panel and then run all of our wiring on that side of the bus through that distribution panel. And in that way, it just saves a lot of effort of having to run multiple wires over the top of the bus just to get to one single location. One of the really fun things about running wires and having my sister here is that I have the opportunity to teach her a couple things about some of the tools we're using and how to actually do this so that when she's doing her bus build, she'll be ready to go. Put it on the 10, which okay. is the third one in. Right there? No, no, no. Let me see the 10. It's right there. That's the 12. No, the bottom, sorry. Oh, um, we're going by so bottom. So grab that. Okay. So now you'll see that it's grabbing right yeah, there. Yeah, and then I just pull. Yep, just squeeze, and it will squeeze that. 
Yep, there you go. Done, let go. Wow. And that's that. I did that. Yep, I did that. Okay. So you see how it goes yep. into that metal piece in there? Yep, and now it's and all the way in. But you can't, I, it can't go all the way through because it'll No, pack. but you can't see any, okay. yeah. All right, so now we have one wire. One wire. This is also heat shrink. See how it's kind of clear? Yeah. So we take the heat gun and I'll show you what happens. Whoa! It just like, whoa! That's crazy. Wow. It just, you have different gauges. So I was learning about, you know, 10 and what one's this? That's 14. 14 gauge wiring. And it's kind of like my earrings, My all my earrings are different gauges. So it depends on like how fat the piece that goes into your ear is, just like this. So I have 14, 16 gauges, which means I have really small standard holes. But in my nose, I used to have a 10 gauge, which means that was a little bit of a thicker bar that I put in just like the wires. I would have never thought of that being a connection. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a really cool way to explain it. Yeah, so gauges are like earrings and <laughs> just like wires. <laughs> That's awesome. Comparable everywhere. <laughs> but now that all the wires are actually tied up and put into their final locations, we can start taping them off. In this case, what we're using are just grocery bags that we are just putting over the wires and then taping up with painter's tape. The reason why we're doing this is because a lot of times spray foam can be a very messy process and the spray foam can actually push one of the wires into the spray foam and you'll lose it or it can just get covered in spray foam and then you're going to spend a lot of time later cleaning off that spray foam. Here's an example of what one of the grocery bags looked like after spray foam. Moving on to the next day where I actually had a friend Dalton come out and help me on the bus build because we were trying to get all the wheel wells and different things strapped off for spray foam. The first thing that I was working on is trying to go around the bus and making sure that any location in which spray foam would go, it wouldn't be able to escape into a location that I didn't want it. For example, this back window, I put a piece of strapping across the face, but there's actually an inch gap behind the piece of plywood. And if they would have spray foamed that area, it would have then grown down and then covered my window and it would be a nightmare to try to get that off of the window. So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting out a simple piece that will be removed later when I'm finally doing my finished molding, but this will be in place to hold back all of the spray foam while it is being installed. As I was getting that done, Dalton was putting in any type of mounting cleats and any fixed points that we needed to be able to install the wheel well casings. These casings are made out of half inch birch plywood and simply just made squares that went around the actual wheel well. The point of this is to contain the spray foam so that we can actually spray foam on top of the wheel wells. This is gonna help with sound detonating, but also with insulation. Once the bus is finished getting spray foamed and we are ready to start building cabinets, these wheel wells are going to be hidden in the back parts of cabinets, so these are not going to be an issue. The only factor that we were trying to pay attention to was to keep them as small as possible and as tight to the actual wheel well. And in this case, it gave us the ability to get it exactly where we wanted so that we can still fit a bathroom in the rear and our kitchen cabinets will be in the front. Okay, so step one is done of boxing out the wheel wells. That's kind of the first thing on the list here. Uh, Dalton helped me kind of get these all squared up and these are just our casings that pretty much are gonna sit right around the wheel wall. All we have to do at this point is get them screwed in. But what this is gonna do is that when we get it spray foam, the spray foamers can come through and spray foam the sides and then they'll just spray foam on top of the wheel well and then eventually this will just get a top place on it and then it'll actually be hidden in the back of cabinets or couches or things of that nature. But it is great that this one is done. We've already actually got this one done and in. So the last thing that would be on the list is to just finish tying down all of the wheel wells and making sure that they are completely secure so that when they are spray foamed, one, they're not gonna bow or break apart, and two, that they're actually gonna be secure so that later on we can use them as mounting locations. Once the wheel wells are both done, I moved on to trying to get the gas inlet done. This is something that a lot of times I myself even forget about, but it is very important to make sure that you also get this spray foamed or insulated just in general. The reason is, is because this location is going to be part of the exterior actually body of the bus, and this is gonna be an area where a lot of cold air or heat is going to come through. So what I did was build in a similar fashion to the wheel wells, made a box, and then installed it around the gas inlet. Since Dalton actually just headed out, Rachel's actually uh, came on and jumped on board to help me get this thing ready because I gotta get this thing over to the spray foam shop. Uh, we're gonna start taping off the windows. I gotta do a couple other things with some like wood and just strapping off to make sure that we can control where the foam's gonna expand. But we got ourselves kind of taped up. Uh, Rachel just finished the back AC line, so that's all taped up. Uh, we're just trying to book it because I think we have like only a few hours till we're supposed to be at the spray foam shop. So it's, uh, it's booking it time. 
If you've never spray foamed before, it can be very difficult to know what you're trying to do and what you need to tape off before you actually arrive at the location. If you're going with a commercial spray foam company, a lot of times they can assist you or even do the taping for you. And in that case, you're gonna be sure that it's completely done where all you have to do is drop off the bus and then pick it up either that afternoon or a few days later. What we elected to do was do quite a bit of the taping off ourselves. Some of it will be done by the actual spray foam company, but what we ended up doing was putting tape over all of the windows in plastic so that none of the spray foam went during the installation process would get on any of the glass. I can assure you from personal experience that it is a nightmare to try to scrape it off the glass. So trying to tape off everything and being really sure and preventative is gonna be your most important thing because in that case, you won't have to worry about it in the future. All right, we are taped off, completely done. All the, st I don't know, just everything. It just like the little details of like, where can this foam possibly go uh, is all taped off. But Rachel here says that she wants to share something. After how long has it been now? Three weeks of waiting. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Once the spray foams up, we're gonna get the kitchen, the office, the bed. There are so many little things that are gonna be in here. It's gonna shock you. I can't wait to see it done. And this is just the first step, spray foam. I actually don't know if she's more excited or I'm more excited that we are finally at this point. Cause there's just a lot of prep work because uh, like she just said, honestly, once we spray foam this thing, it's really, it sheets really quickly because yeah. we already did all the prep work. All the wires are in, uh, all the framing is already kind of jigged out and uh, we have everything already studded. It's just all done. Um, so really, it's gonna get moving. Also, greatest thing about spray foam, we get out of the cold and into the garage a little bit warmer. Are you cold? Is that like only three jackets you have? It's on? only three, you know, I got two uh, thick ones on, so <laughs> coming at you in October. <laughs> okay, bus is started and uh, it's all ready for spray foam. So now the only thing I gotta do is drive to the spray foam place, drop it off. Unfortunately, uh, it's gonna probably take them about two to three days to actually get it done. Uh, it will probably, well, spray foaming is only gonna actually take probably like an hour, uh, but because of their schedule and because of the time of year that it is, um, they're gonna have to hold the bus for about three days. So dropping it off and I'm gonna be like busless for like three, well, I have Navi. Maybe I'll go work on Navi. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, well, either way, I gotta hit the road. So time to go. I've had quite a few buses in the past spray foamed and it's happened two different ways. Sometimes I have to take it to their actual shop location and in other cases, they actually come to the actual build site location. In this case, due to my location and the fact that the weather temperatures are not getting above 50 degrees at night or during the day, this bus has to get spray foamed inside the shop so that the spray foam can cure properly. But I have to say that driving around the Adirondacks isn't exactly the worst thing for an afternoon, so driving it over to the shop was probably a pretty good break. All right, we just made it to the spray foam place, so I'm gonna have to run inside and get all the paperwork figured out and finished. Uh, fun note to everyone, I actually just wrote the check out. Um, so this school bus, just for fun information, uh, three inches of spray foam, cut, taped off, and sprayed with closed cell foam is gonna be $997.92. That was the, what the quote was. So this is a 21 foot school bus uh, exterior. So just some reference if anyone out there is looking at spray foam coats, it's usually, spray foam coats, spray foam jobs, uh, it's usually around a dollar to a dollar 50 per square board foot. Uh, so this one, like I just said, is around 900 uh, or we'll say $1,000. It's around $1,000. So let me go pay about $1,000 and then uh, drop this thing off and wait for it to get spray foamed. We did it. We did do it. We dropped her off. Well, we're dropping her off. Uh, it's, we're basically, if we're here, we're paid, we're ready. I know, so. I know. Bye, bus. Bye, bus. Maybe for once you'll actually get some rest. <laughs> Unfortunately, because the school bus had to be sprayed inside of the shop, I wasn't able to get any footage of them spraying Ivan. So instead, here's some old shots of a trailer that I built last year with some friends getting spray foam down in Denver. We just pulled, when I say we, I mean, hi Rach. Hi. We just pulled into the parking lot where the bus is and it's spray foamed and we're gonna pick it up. And this is the first time that we're all gonna see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. We need to go in and get the keys so we can see it. I can start to, oh my God, I can see foam. I can see foam a little bit. I can see foam. I can see it in there. <sighs> Let's go get the keys and then go check out the inside of the bus or we'll just go look through the window because like I'm that excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll go. Can't really see through there. Let's go look through the back. Oh, you can't see. 
and I locked the door. Oh my gosh, I can see it though. Wow, they did an awesome job. What? What? Oh, it like looks like a house for once. This is, okay, this is the first time that this thing's starting to look like a house. Like, foam, 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 foam. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I'm so excited. Now, like, I hope uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you, you can now see literally that like, this is gonna be so easy to plywood. It's already framed perfectly smooth, like, oh my gosh. What do you say, Rach? This is incredible. I know, it's like. I mean, worth the wait for sure, but like, I'm excited because now you can like see it coming together. Yeah, like everything's like, whoa. It's oh, not an empty shell of metal anymore. Darn. I know some people were asking me on Instagram and stuff why I bagged these up and whatnot. Uh, the reason is because like, look, there's spray, and this isn't their fault. I mean, this is just, if you ever seen people spray, it's, it's kind of almost violent in terms of the, the exothermic reaction, but like, it just gets on everything. And now all we gotta do is rip these bags off and then all of our wires Wires are clear, exposed, and we have to not have to worry about any of the spray from on there. But it's time to get this thing back to the house so we can start building. And I'm actually gonna let Rachel drive it. Yay! On a scale of one to ten, how excited? Ten. <laughs> I'm ready for it. All right, start it up. Let's go. Well, at this point, the bus is completely spray foamed and it is back at the build site. So, in a coming episodes, we're going to be building out the garage to make sure that we actually have somewhere to build when the weather starts getting cold and we start sheeting the inside so we can get ready for cabinets. If you like this video, remember to subscribe and check out all the previous build videos by checking out the build series. With all that said, I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you next time.